<laughs> only joking, or am I? I am the one and only. Just so happens I probably am. There was going to be a strike to bust today. I'm frustrated. There was no strike to bust. I did it all day last Tuesday. It's great fun. You just go up to the picket line, you bust through, you annoy everybody, then you go inside, make a load of private calls. Don't do any work. Go and zip it in your own private Idaho. Zip it in your own The uh, B-52s are still gigging at the moment. I saw them about two or three years ago going through this. Schneider was there gasping for air, his tongue lolling out the side of his head. It looked like Robert Morley on a treadmill. Kate Pearson, of course, the only pop star to have slept with Colonel Gaddafi. Apparently in the early days, uh, Schneider persuaded the rest of the band to help him burn and loot an isolated village in Mississippi. He basically got the men out of the huts, flayed them, then made them run sprint races, threw the women and children into a swamp. certain circumstances, it may be necessary and sensible to administer a smack to your child. Okay, so in today's Toxic Gob, your chance to speak in Call 1FM. That's our new phone-in with Peter Hamill, the subject today, Animals and Justice. We'll be looking at strike beating. What happens if you call up Tory Central Office and ask them for the news 24 hours in advance? We're trying to skirt possible industrial action tomorrow, which will threaten the news bulletins. We're not sure if it's going to happen. You may know the parties are at ACAS, but there is a threat of unofficial action. Right. By recording uh, as much of the news as possible today, and then using it tomorrow. Right. Is there anything that you could say which would still be extant in 24 hours' time? Well, I suppose, uh, I mean, we could find some ministers who might talk about the importance of the European, el uh, uh, European election. With the European uh, Yeah. More of that in 10 minutes. Also, uh, if you want to call 0716374343 now and uh, enough people call, I will repeat that up John libel that cost the BBC £1.5 million in the week. 
There'll be opaque rambling from my man Sergeant Murphy. Human projectile Peter Bainham will bring back a celebrity's trash can. We'll sort out exactly who in a minute. We'll sort through the gin dinge and let you know what's there. Uh, we're reviewing the virgin book of legal highs. And... As uh, the news spouts ever more from the news horse, we'll keep you abreast of it. Uh, tonight, Jimmy Savile drops dead at a charity bash. The patients at Stoke Mandeville Hospital are not grieving. The majority, if not all of them, are extremely relieved that he's now dead. Although I suspect that some of them will be sorry that he, he didn't suffer a great deal more before his death. This wrinkle in time can't give it no credit. drift by you like a piece of cardboard the first time you hear it second time it kind of sticks you find yourself joining in with the stupid backing vocals yeah you see that um, max clifford has been hired by the 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 people who are alleging that alan clark had an affair well the, the judge is alleging that alan clark had an affair with uh, all three of his ladies and uh, i hope max clifford does better for him than he does for um who was the previous client bienvenida buck there was um i know i saw it actually the, the press launch of um th uh, four four weddings and an f that uh, he was still, still trying to get press for bienvenida buck um what she was doing she went nicholas there she got out of a taxi uh, threw her skirt over her head nobody paid the bonus bit of attention got out went round the other side got in again got out again threw her skirt over the head again absolutely no reaction at all even started firing ping pong balls off well she stood on the top of the cab started firing ping pong balls bangkok uh, whorehouse style at the press cordon absolutely no reaction whatsoever somebody sort of saying oh so if somebody put these ping pong balls in the seafood nothing more um I hope it does better for them. Peter Bainham, um, who can we, who can we, uh, we've got a couple of people in town. Yeah, yeah. Written, um, Emma, Thompson, well, Emma, Thompson Emma Thompson. Yeah, Emma Thompson's, Thompson's in town. Okay, America. well, the, the deal here is that uh, Peter's agreed to go out and get uh, their trash can. Yeah, yeah. All right, so if you can do that in about 20, if you can make it 25 minutes. Yeah. I think they're staying in Bayswater. Okay, yeah, Bayswater. So right, Emma so. Thompson and whoever she's with Bayswater. staying in Bayswater. Go and get the uh, trash can. Be back here in 25. Will do. Okay, see you later. 
And up next, uh, those calls basically strike busting yesterday, phoned up a few people and said, listen, can you give us a comment for the news 24 hours in advance so we can beat the strike? And they said, yeah, sure. Hush not, child. And don't cry. Your folks might understand you by and by. Just move on. Your destination, though you may find from time to time complication. Circumstances, it may be necessary and sensible to administer smack to your child. Ranking hit record that has got to have the most about the most out of tune horn section that there is doesn't make it any worse a record Curtis Mayfield watch out for the lighting rig and move on up um, now this deal with the news basically yesterday there was threatened industrial action so I phoned up a few people said uh, look we're trying to plan ahead for the news we're trying to record the news 24 hours in advance would you be able to do anything I got through the Tory central office they were more than obliging they bent over backwards they said yeah we could put you in touch with some top level politicians no trouble at all so straight away they uh, put the phone down then they phoned up John Selwyn Gummer then I phoned him up two minutes later Hello, is that Mr. Gummer? Yes. I don't know if you're aware of the situation, but basically there may be industrial action tomorrow which uh, threatens to undermine the news bulletins, obviously. Yes. And in order to supermount the trouble, we're trying to record as much of the news as possible today. Of course, I understand. So, if there's anything uh, you want to say which you feel will be extant in 24 hours... Well, I think the thing that will be extant is the, um, uh, the major issue about vetoing. Right, well, can we record a statement on that now for tomorrow's news? Yeah. Um, one for tomorrow morning's news and one for tomorrow evening's news. Slightly different. I see what you mean, yes, indeed. So, so what would be the first one? Well, the first one is that I... Uh, I'm, I'm very... Con I, no, it's something I'll do. Okay. Let me, let me cut, I'm trying to think about how to do the two things. Yes. Sure. Over and over again, 
Britain needs to have her veto, not as a threat, but because everybody then knows that when things of great national importance comes up, she's not pushed to the brink. That's why the veto's vital. Now, if it's going to go high in the bulletin, it will probably benefit from a swipe at one of the opposition parties. Uh, right. Would you like to change that in any way? Well, I'd just say, um, I'm... Um, the British people must be appalled that the Liberal Democrats are so split over the veto. It's quite clear that the major spokesmen like Sir David Steele want to get rid of Britain's veto. We can't have that. I think the Liberals are selling Britain down the river. Uh, would you like to perhaps put out something about the Labour Party? You've mentioned the Liberals okay. there. Uh, something about the Labour, if you could sort of give them a bit of a wigging. <laughs> right. Yeah. Labour has uh, signed up with the European Socialist Manifesto. So they've joined the Liberals on saying that Britain can be members of the European community without any veto over the matters that really matter. And I'm sorry the Labour Party has joined the Liberals in that. So basically, there he was, and... The, the one thing more ticked over, I thought, well, if, there's a, if it's 24 hours ahead, the, the situation might change. Labour, uh, not up, up, uh, holding the right for veto, may do a volt fast and suddenly say, oh, no, after all, we are going for the veto. So then what happens? Right, now let's just look at the possibility that during the course of the day, Labour have reversed their attitude on the veto. What do you say then? Well, if Labour's now pretending it, <laughs> it wants to keep the veto, that's the seventh change on Europe that it's had in almost as many years. Ah. Now, if it says it wants to keep the uh, British veto, then how can it go on being part of the Socialist Union of Parties? It doesn't stand up. This Labour Party will say anything to get a vote. OK, so this hasn't even happened yet, and he's that angry. There's more. There's one more. The, 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 he, he, we've, like, pushed another inches towards the peak. Probably do that in two minutes. But he was angry about a fiction. It's a soundbite mentality for you. It's us three. Hey yo, check it out. I got a hype rhyme for you that'll rock from London, England to the boom dots of Georgia. Intelligent, benevolent, super. All the qualities of H.I.C. The alley oopa. My main man and me, we've been cool since day one. Scooping all the fly girls, having all the fun. Sport the dope threads and the hundred dollar kicks. Making power moves, so get off my nah. I won't say it cause it's crystal, it's clear I get the job done each and every year Back in school, I used to act a fool But I rocked an A average, so everything's cool Tool, my pencil, the mic's my utensil I read the mic check and you can write that in stencil So you wonder why I made it and your shit is going wrong Hey yo, show, I got it going on I got it going on Sit back, relax, and I'll make your day. 
Radical concepts, that's my choice Freak it through the music and flow through my voice So let's face it, it's time to get back to the basics Sing a simple song that goes on and on and on I'm climbing to the top just like King Kong Hey, guess what? I got it going on Okay, don't forget those 737 4343 If you want to take part in Call 1FM, the subject today, animals and justice. Can animals used, be used to help us expand our sense of justice? That with Peter Hamill happens just after the 9.30 news. Okay, uh, the last blip of uh, John Selwyn Gummer getting angry about a fiction. Basically, I put to him the fiction that, uh, that, that Labour had reversed their policy. This doesn't even happen. Labour reversed their policy on uh, the Euro veto, and he went like this. Do you think they'd say anything just in the interest of appeasing a few voters? Well, I'm sorry about the Labour Party, but clearly it doesn't want to have any policies lest anybody be put off from it. And they're very upset that we flushed them out on the issue of the veto. Now we've pushed them and flushed them out. They are frightened and they don't want to stand up to what they signed up for only a couple of months ago. Right there, Mr. Gower, thank you very much. Right, OK. OK, okay bye. Bye-bye. Chris Morris, 1FM. Now drugs. Most ways of getting high are illegal, and in this country, whilst it's punishable by law, quite definitely the case here, with campaigners constantly fighting for their legalisation, so it looks like remaining unlikely to be changed. However, from next Monday, Virgin Publications release a new book, which you may find useful if you want to get high, but remain within the law. I'm joined in the studio now by Hugh Matoklin, uh, who runs a head shop in Covent Garden. He's here to help review the book and to look at some of the methods that you can use quite legally to get corked. Good evening, Hugh. Hello there. Now, looking at the book, it gives a brief history of the mm -hmm. drugs that you used to be able to get in f normal food stuff. Yes, it does. It's a fascinating uh, little bit of history at the beginning there, where it sort of talks about these products that had uh, various things. I mean, it talks about the one which we all know, which was uh, Coca-Cola used to contain cocaine. And Horlicks used to contain a gram of heroin. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Now, uh, what about these ways of getting high? The sort of the school kids stuff, yeah, you know, the bay leaves. It sort of jumps on all those things, like you know, like you said, bay leaves, nutmeg, banana skins, crumbling up banana skins, smoking little reeds of grass. Uh -huh. Quite rightly, it poos all that. Sort yeah, of poos them. Poos them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but then it moves on to the one I'm, which I remember doing um, a lot of the time, which was uh, if you take a saxophone, uh -huh. fill it with honey, smoke a spider plant through the honey, bubble it through the honey. Yeah. What's, what's yeah, that yeah. called? Uh, that's called sweetsophoning. And how does that work? What does it do well, to you? Well, basically, it just leaves you very, very, very calm for about three days afterwards. Excellent. And yeah, then there's this one good. here, don't speak for a fortnight, very cheap. Now, if you don't speak for a fortnight, what happens? You basically get a build-up well, of chemicals. what you get is, yeah, you get a build-up of non-expressed word chemicals, right. which will, just after about two weeks, because normally they, they get burnt out, after about two weeks, then they, they will peak. just they will just fly off and you'll be very, very high. Off your very face. Good, yep. Now, there's the old mice, mouse in a motorcycle helmet. Yep. That works pretty well. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a little thing with you there, which is kind of like a, a thumbnail-sized little piece of brass. Yeah, what is yeah. That? What this is, this is a fly kettle. We retail this in the shop for about £19.99. Right. Uh, what it does, you use it for in, uh, boiling an individual fly. Mm -hmm. uh, what it does, it extracts the resin, you drink the resin, gives you a very sort of short-lived but very, very powerful high. <laughs> I, I suppose you could say a bit of a buzz. It certainly induces a sense of euphoria, yeah. Now, perhaps the best method of all here, because it can be done in groups, it's quite a social thing, is this thing where you, you go, you find a field of grazing cows, and you mm -hmm. basically climb inside a cow. You That's cut right, a slit yeah. behind the ribcage, yeah. and you climb inside the cow, and yeah. then lie on top of the rib cage, with your That's face right. stuffed into the body, your feet sticking out of the back, mm -hmm. and, you, and you get a slow well, high from this. How does that happen? Well, what happens is that um, it releases endorphins, a huge amount of, obviously a cow's a big animal, mm. huge amount of endorphins are released into the wound, and then they just enter your body through your forehead or whatever. So the cow know. stands there quite calmly grazing away, doesn't even yeah, notice yeah, with yeah. all those endorphins around. Yeah, and it. this has a technical name. Oh yes, it's that's known as riding the black and white bus. Now, there's one thing. We'll come on to look at the, the loopholes around street drugs in just a moment. Yeah. I just must ask you, something in your shop I saw the other day when I went in to research right. this, was a, a, a pair of underpants, a pair of yeah. pink ladies' pants. Um, and on the front was a plastic disc containing all the paraphernalia used for taking crack cocaine. And yeah. in fact, a little uh, file of crack. That's right. Now, presumably when you flog that, you don't expect people to take the drug. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, just, just for fun. I mean, it, the, the cocaine, the crack inside it is very, very poor quality stuff anyway. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. I just, I just it. wanted to make sure. Probably kill you. Yeah. Okay. Later. So, street drugs in a minute.
Happy Mondays. And... Smelling dough! the point of Thursday. Six three seven four three four three. your calls on animals and justice. Can we learn from animals in the way we use justice? Peter Hamill will be handling that issue after 9.30. We're reviewing the Virgin Book of Legal Highs with me in the studio, Hugh Matoklin. Now, um, Hugh, looking at street drugs now yeah. and the way you can get round using those, um, first of all, scoring the drugs. What's the, what's yeah, the best way, yeah, the, the well, legal way, to store, or the best way to score drugs? Well, one of the best ways is steal from a dealer because they're not going to touch you, basically. Sure, they're not yeah, going to report yeah. you, are they? Uh -huh. Well, you can buy it from a gibbon. That's right, yeah. Um, Manchester, the Mossad over in Manchester, and also Cardiff are big uh, gibbon trafficking areas now. Yep. Right. Um, now, possession is the most dangerous part. Yeah. Uh, that's where you can really get caught. Now, mm -hmm. there's a couple of technicalities around this as well, isn't there? Yeah, well, basically, you can only be prosecuted for possession of a drug if you have it physically on your person. So, what we, this is the other thing we sell in the shop, which is a small helium balloon, and it's got a basket underneath it. And once you've scored your drug, you put the drug in the basket, right. then inflate the helium balloon, walk along with the helium balloon in front of you, sort of banging it with your head now and again. You know, if a policeman comes up, it's not technically on your it's person. It's not yours, it's nothing to do with no, you. No, no, it's, it's just, just there and, you know, attached to you. that's right, yeah. I suppose the other thing you do, you could put it inside a dog. Yeah, that's uh, right. Make you the dog swallow it, take it home. Make it sick, basically. Got show it a drug picture it. of, um, I suppose make it sick by showing yeah. a picture of Claire Rayner masturbating with a chainsaw, yeah. chainsaw or something, yeah. Pardon? Now, taking the drug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there must be one, there is in fact one very good yeah. way of getting away with taking the drug, isn't there? Right, there is, yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the law does state that if you have a drug on your person, you go up to a policeman and you say, I am about to take a drug now. Look at me. Look at me. I'm, I'm about, about to, to take, take a, a drug, drug now. Take the drug then. They can't touch you. Can't touch you. No. Hugh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Virgin Book of Legal Highs. 27.99 in the shops on Monday. It's about time for the intro of this.
his pulp latest single, lead singer Kieran Prenderville. Well, it happened years ago When you lived on Standard Road We listened to your sister When she came home from school She was two years older And she had boys in her room well, you know, the rest really, they just kind of got more and more sophisticated in their voyeurism. They used to spy on people who were having sex and stuff, and then he did it himself, really. That was about it. Catherine Mitchell reporting. It now looks like a straight fight between Tony Blair and John Prescott in the Labour leadership battle. Gordon Brown, the Shadow Chancellor, has ruled himself out of the contest. Sefton Council in Merseyside has launched an inquiry into the death of a mentally handicapped woman who stepped into a scalding hot bath at one of its care homes. Charges against two men accused of killing the road manager of the group Boys to Men have been dropped. A judge in Chicago says there wasn't enough evidence. Millions of rail commuters face possible disruption later this month after signalmen voted for strike action. Members of the union, the RMT, voted 4-1 to one in favour of industrial action over pay. And a monster pig who made history by being banned from the Texan city of Houston has been dramatically turned into bacon. Jeffrey the half-ton hog was famous for attempting to live in the city which bans pigs but he was struck by lightning during a storm. The Texas farmer who's cared for the animal ever since says this is terrible. He was kind of fried. That's it. Next news at 10.30. Oh, hey. oh, hang on. It wasn't meant to be this one. It could be this one instead. I, uh, um, no. Yeah, I knew there was a reason for it being this one. Probably sick of this, you know, it's the one that goes... Once there was this kid who sang in such a stupid voice that he thought sounded cool, he didn't have the sense to realize it sounded... Like he was forcing a stool. Uh, he thought he thought he sounded like thunder, but he was just a one it wonder. And you can't know the rest really. Okay, meanwhile, here is a smart ass American that is fun to spend time with. This is Beck. And beer can of mellow gold. I can hold all my hands, I got plans to ditch myself and get outside. Dead some women from a place, capitating their laughing gates, swelling chickens, cotton flag, out of focus, a much too black coming down. Shining teeth, game show suckers try in the play, but I got a drug and I got the book and I got something better than love. How you like me now? Pretty good. Going all feeling strong. I quit my job blowing leaves, telephone bills up my sleeves, choking like a one man dust ball. Freedom rocks my ball, talking and cold went down. Lit up the shack, grab me a beer out of the sack. Everybody been over twice. Paint the walls, throwing some dice, leaping up into the air, getting juiced up beyond belief. And they were thinking like this. Why no throw it first, they the song. Put my soul between the ball. Now I'm running, now I'm drunk. Now I'm running like a flaming pig. Oh, yeah. Scraping off the attitude. Old man eating all my food. Don't be kind, don't be rude. Just shake your boots and let it all get loose.
and unhappy by not letting the cat. If you want to vote for me to repeat the libel which cost the BBC 1.5 million quid, phone now, 0716374343. Watch out for callers to Call 1FM. That starts in 30 seconds' time. Peter Hamill will be here discussing animals and justice. But 0716374343 for both those issues. Uh, too many artists rolled into one track there to uh, name them all. Now, Call 1FM is uh, the part of the program where we like to give you the chance. We shut up and you do the talking. You the chance to mouth off about various issues of concern. And this is our first. Call 1FM is basically your phone-in. Call 1FM. Time now for you to uh, express your views on the air in Call 1FM. Here's Peter Hamill. Hi, Peter. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Yep, I'm fine. Can't say you look so well, must say. <laughs> <laughs> Call us now on 071-637-4343. That's 071-637-4343. The subject today, animals and justice. Hi, you're through to Call 1FM. Who's on line 26? It's Atul Shah here. Yep. Basically, like to say that uh, I do feel that animals have uh, feelings. Are you saying that animals have a sense of justice which is simpler and in some ways better than our own? Yes, yes, I do. Um, I mean, uh, but I think what's what's happened with man is that we've become more sophisticated, and the more sophisticated we've become, the further away we've gone from what is natural. If I write it down, it is sophistication does not equal. It's that, that, like a British rail sign, yes. does not equal good. Yes. What can we learn for our own sense of justice uh, from the animal world, and how can we apply it in the way that we seek to provide justice for ourselves? Um, uh, really, I think, you know, if, if you look at how animals um, rear their young... With a horse, when its uh, foal has just hatched, it's very, very, uh, very, very, very nice to it, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Or rear, anyway, yes. Yes. A horse, um, a horse rears. Sorry? What are you talking about exactly? Well, you know, how they, how, they, how they interact with their young. If they're mammals, it's tongues mainly, isn't it? Yes. What about birds? I think, I think birds also have a, a very close bonding. You only have to look at some, something like penguins who, who sit in the Arctic for six months, um, you know, with the egg on their feet, uh, waiting for it to hatch. Can you think of an example of penguin immorality which you would not expect the emperor or rock hopper to commit? Crime. Well, uh, war, for example. Penguin war? Yeah. What would penguin war involve if it broke out? Um, sort of, you know, clump of penguins clubbing together to, to, to... Screaming towards each other, heads held low, across the ground. Yeah. Impolation and damage. At yes. the end of it. Yes. If you saw that, how would you feel? Oh, it would make me feel very sad. Thank you for calling Call 1FM. Your call has released a just dog. Thank you. Hello, line 140. Who's there? Yes, hello. I'm David Chilliston. And what's your point, please? Well, my point is uh, the animal attitude towards justice is that those who don't fit the um, species norm... The species who? The, the species norm. Yep. Peter, but yep. Yes, that's, uh, that's right. Uh, what, uh, what I'm saying is that the emulation of some animal um, justice characteristics uh, might help us uh, uh, to produce some order out of the chaos. Let me ask you this. We're pushed for time, but what animal characteristics would you like to see emulated in a courtroom? Um, Mountain gorilla? 
Uh, yes, in actual fact, the uh, gorilla community is, is very good. What sorts of mounting gorilla behaviour would you like to see brought into a courtroom? Oh, I, the as aspect of intolerance of antisocial behaviour. That intolerance expressed by facial expression? Yes, uh, other physical posturing and, of course, the aggressive pose, the attempted broadening of the uh, uh, shoulders. Flaring of nostrils? Yes, it's as if to infer some imminent physical violence. What about the bounding from one region to another at high speed? Oh, yes. Yes. Would the move towards the mountain gorilla be a gradual thing? Yes. And it would, would have it... to be, otherwise it would be unacceptable to the population. Your call has freed one just dog. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. Call. Call. More calls on your opinions on animals and justice F after F this noise. F Miss Kathleen First was Kevin Then came Lucy Third in line was me All of us were ordinary Compared to Cynthia Rose She always stood At the back of the line A smile beneath her nose Her favorite number was 20 And every single day If you ask her what you had for breakfast This is what she'd say Style fish and coffee Maple syrup and jam Scotch clouds and a tangerine A side on a ham If you set your mind free, baby Maybe you understand Style fish and coffee Maple syrup and jam oh, oh. You think I should talk to Q? Style fish and coffee Cynthia had a happy face just back to one she draws On every wall, on every school But it's alright, it's all worthy cause Gone I keep saying stop fish and coffee Maple syrup and jam Butterscotch clouds, tangerine Side of all the ham If you set your mind free, baby Maybe you understand Stop fish and coffee What's my name? What's my name? Hi hat. Hello, this is Peter Hamill. You're through to Call 1 FM. The subject today, animals and justice. If you have any comments to make at all on that subject, phone us now and put your opinions through to the air. Hello? Yes, hello, Paul. What's your point? You're talking about animals and justice. That's right, yeah. Mm, good. Well, Animals can sense uh, right from wrong because um, they normally pick it up from their, their owners. So, are you saying that animals are sort of acting out a little play for us to follow? Well, it could be that way, yes, yes. And what animals do you think are best at doing that, acting out a little play for us to follow? Um, well, the dogs. The dogs are mainly uh, our pack animals, aren't they? So, what percentage of your time would you say you need to spend watching the dogs? Uh, maybe... 15%. 15% of your time. And yeah. what percent of time do you think people spend watching the dogs at the moment? Uh, about, about 2%, I should think. And when you think of the injustice in the world, how does that make you feel, bearing in mind that people only spend 2% of their time watching the dogs? Well, I mean, it's, it's not good enough, is it? And when it comes to leaders of countries that perpetuate cruelty, how much time do you think they spend uh, watching the dogs? Well, they, they don't spend any time, I shouldn't think. No time at all no watching the dogs? All, no. And would they need to go into some sort of remedial dog-watching class in order to catch up? And if so, how much time should they spend watching the dogs? Well, maybe 50% of their 50 time. 50% of their time. Yeah. So, if we're talking somebody like Pol Pot, think about what he did to people. Mm -hmm. How much time would you recommend he spent watching dogs? Pol Pot, about 90%. Thanks for calling. You'll be glad to know that your call has freed a just dog. Oh, great, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Line 7. You're through to Call 1FM. Who's there? 
Katie Boyle. Katie Boyle. Listen, I'll thank you for calling now, just in case we get into an argument and I have to cut you off. Oh, <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I think we'll probably agree. Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> what's your point? Oh, I've got so many points. Um, dogs, animals in general, but dogs in particular, we can learn so much from them. You can teach, for instance, mothers who won't discipline their children, who have no idea how to bring up a child. They should only watch a bitch with their, with their youngsters. Let me come in like a juggernaut here and say, are you suggesting that they could be used as an example in social work? Oh, yes, tremendously. And what Very about... much so. For instance, pet dogs, for instance, pets with, on therapy. A therapy is absolutely Pets fascinating. Pets therapy, yeah. Yes, they're wonderful in hospitals and watching them. I tell you what, Katie, what we're talking about here and what some of the other callers have mentioned too is Padge. Pets as jury. Oh, yes, very much so. They so, have an inborn sense of fairness. And if you were in court and the prosecuting lawyer brought in a dog and the dog reacted badly to the man in the dock, what decision would you make about the man in the dock? I'd, I'd be very wary of that man. So your, your, your ear would be cocked in the direction of the possibility that he was more wrong than right? Without a doubt. Let's be specific here. It would have to be a neutral dog. You'd have to have a neutral dog, But naturally. what sort of dog would be best at well, providing that, that diagnosis depends. in a court of law? I would have thought a, a, a Rottweiler, a, a Doberman. So a good animal for pet as jury would be the Rottweiler, yep? Uh... Rottweiler, uh, Weimaraner Vi uh, would be a very good one, and a Doberman would be a very good one, German Shepherd too. What about wild animals? Wild animals? Well, well, of course, the wolf. The wolf is a dog. Sure. Now, let's look at the rather sad issue of animals in war. Yeah, oh. What, what's uh, your feeling about that? Mm -hmm. I suppose that sums it up well. Well, Any... look what they've done. They've been heroes. They've been heroines in war. Yes. They but... have been totally uh, oblivious of any danger. Sometimes and... they've been tools. They have been total tools, mm. yes. I suppose we all are sometimes. Well, all of us are, yeah. yes. But, but that is it. That is a terrible thing. You can train a dog and you can, you can uh, bring out its salient points. But you can't stop I... it being a total tool. No, very no. not. All right, let me tap your opinion on a suggestion that a previous caller made that a snake containing a stick of dynamite should have been sent in to Saddam Hussein's bunker. Do you feel sorry for it? Yes. Stick a dynamite inside it. I hate to say I do, because that, ca uh, that snake, if it had any chance at all, it would get out of his way. Sure. And he w it would have to be timed so that it would just, just catch it at that moment. Otherwise, you'll find it probably when he's going to the loo, because it'll have slithered out of, the, uh, uh, out of the place and out of his vision. But one snake less in that instance, do you think it could be justified? I think so. Is there any other way that we can expose ourselves to animals in such a way as to learn? Yes, I've learned a tremendous amount from a social, sociological point of view um, how to behave when you are mixed with people that you don't know. So, sociologically, how does the study of strays help you, say, when you're presenting yourself at a film premiere? Well, I think I've learned never to be aggressive, and I think that's really what it's taught me to do, much more than uh, against my instinct, against my nature, not to be so impulsive. So you would don the mind and indeed don the beard of a stray dog when you went into that situation? Uh, yes. And if you were donning the beard of a dog, it would be one that you knew well? Mm-hmm. Righto. Katie Ball, thank you very much for joining us on this issue. <laughs> thank a you for A lot of asking. valuable points there, and your call has liberated a just dog. Ah, oh, I'm so glad. And it's nice to talk to you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. I'm Peter Hamill. Those were your calls on Animals and Justice. If you didn't get through this time, do join us again and contribute next time on Call 1FM. Call 1 1 1 1 FM 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 so the number now, 071-637-4343. If you've got anything to follow up on what Peter Hamill was saying there, that's fine. And also, if you want me to repeat the libel action, or at least the libel statement, the statement that lost the B 1.5 million last week, then do that now. 071-637-4343.
some news coming up on the printers here. Top story tonight. A man who spent an afternoon porridge flicking for charity has been embarrassed by the response from regulars at his local pub. When he totted up the money this afternoon, he found his four-hour attempt to flick a ton of porridge over a wall had raised seven million pounds. I've no idea how it happened, he said. I just counted the coins and that was what it came to. I used some of it to make a girl show me her tits. Remember at the uh, start of the program, we sent Peter Bainham out to go and uh, fish out Emma Freud's trash can. Looks like he's just arrived. Come in, come in. Hi. Okay, let's just bang it out there and we'll look at it at the end of this, okay? This is basically Emma, that's Emma Freud. I mean, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson's uh, trash can. She's staying in Bayswater tonight. Uh, we've gone and nicked her dustbin. We'll have a look at the contents of that in less than a minute's time. What have we got inside Emma Thompson's uh, right, trash can tonight? I've um, oh got cardboard negligee. Nice. Oh, look at these. A couple, um, couple of nylon Fred Wests. Oh, lovely. Oh, beautiful, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, oh, God, this is horrible. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, sort of drawing of Helena Bonham Carter being eaten by a huge pig or something. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Isn't by it? the way, that was horrible. Parliament and flashlight. Yeah. Okay, Emma, yes, mm -hmm. uh, Emma Thompson's trash can. What else have we got? A yeah, spherical yeah. bib. Look, yep. spherical bib, cruel but effective. A uh, piece of plastic piss. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah, you can keep that. You all can right. keep that. Uh, what's that? What's that? Where? Oh, it's in a Willie John McBride uh, cake kit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I used to have one of those. I used to have one of those ages ago. Yeah, I, I know. know. Right, and there's one other thing here which I've got, which is what seems to be a Femidom stuff with spent shotgun cartridges. There's, this looks like the bottom <laughs> of a letter here, which, yeah. um, I don't know, it's kind of like a torn off thing. It's um, the name Oriego. It hasn't got the first bit on. Uh, yeah. All I can make out here through this kind of I had coffee spilt all over it says straight off the fall or best of all as an enum. <laughs> that doesn't go any more than that. Um, well, that seems to be it. Yeah. Much. It's a rather empty trash can, but slightly yeah. revealing. Do you know who she's going out with at the moment, by the way? Um, just have a guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go on, did you know I'm just talking about thinking about libel. Um, well, Kenneth Branagh, of course. Uh, no, <laughs> she's actually going out with Walter Matter. <laughs> she is. And yeah. you know who Kenneth Branagh's going out with? Uh, Jack Lemmon. Drew Barrymore. Hey! I want to shoot, baby. Shoot. Oh, thanks, by the way. Cheers. Oh. Were you chased by any animal already? Were you no. chased by anything? No. No, I, no. I did run like hell, though. You didn't even have yeah. a torch. Pardon? You didn't even have a torch. You just like. No, I just uh, I ran in there. I sort of, you know, I leapt into the bin, grabbed the stuff, you know, covered in all kinds of rubbish. Better put it back, she'll never know. Uh, here I go, here I go, here I go again, girls. What's my weakness? Okay, then, chillin'. Minding my business Word. Your souls I looked around And I couldn't believe this I swear I stand My niece my witness The brother had it going on With something kinda uh, Wicked, wicked Had to kick it I'm not shy So I asked for the digits I hope no That don't make me See what I want Slip slide to it Swiftly Felt it in my hips So I dip back To my bag of tricks Then I flip forward Tip made me wanna do tricks On them lips 
lick them like a lollipop should be lit. Came to my senses and I chill for a bit. Don't know how you do the voodoo that you do so well. This is spell hell makes me wanna shoot, shoot, shoot. I wanna thank your mother for a butt like that Can I get some fries with that shake, shake, booby? If looks could kill, you would be an Uzi or a shotgun bang What's up with that thing? I wanna know, how does it hang? Straight up, wait up, hold up, Mr. Lover Like Prince said, you're a sexy mother Well, uh, I like them real wild B-boy style by the miles Who black skin with a smile Bright as the sun, I wanna have some fun Come and give me some of that yum, yum chop Chip, honey, dip, can I get a Baby, take a ride in my coupe. You make me want to. Don't believe the votes are saying that I should not repeat the libel that cost the BBC 1.5 million. Well, vote me into it. Uh, I don't know why anybody would phone up and say, no, don't repeat the libel, please don't repeat the libel. Come on. 0716374343. You can just watch a man flush away 1.5 million. And you've got about two minutes to do it. Sergeant Murphy, by the way, follows before 10. And uh, hey, kids, remember this? I believe this is a trailer for Chris Morris, 9pm on Wednesday. Though actually, if I stopped to think, I'd realise it's just a trap to make me say rude stuff. Is that it? Uh, Neely, I'd just like you to read something filthy that you don't understand. No way you'll make me do that. Hurrah for furry hoops. All hail the purple vein junket pumper and praise God for passing the beef curtains. Okay, now in the interests of uh, showing your knickers on air, um, I just I went up to a couple of people, had a lovely conversation on a bank holiday afternoon about uh, this and that, uh, asked them to read that out and said, oh, I don't know what it is. I think it's an extract from a play or something, you know, some feeble excuse like that. I kind of disassociated myself from the script as much as possible. And um, when we got to the beef curtains section, she, she read it twice. And this was her kind of surmise of what it meant. Thank okay. you for parting the beef and then the curtains come down. Though. That's right, yes. yeah. Yeah, because I said it was a play. <laughs> uh, uh, right, so that's that. That's my knickers. Um, now, earlier this week, I bumped into my man, Sergeant Murphy. What's going to be the outcome of the strike? Well, I think it's going to be six to four against the Blues. Do you feel any sympathy? Yes, terrible pains in my back. Who's been looking strong at the moment in the strike? Yeah, Michael Aspel. What's my life? John Burt popped his head out of the top floor window and spat on the crowd. We can play all the 1922 films, he said. What about the Chuck Berry Collective? That'll be in the book. There's only 94 pages in it, but it'll be in page 99. What point did John Smith come in? Because this was shortly before, wasn't well, it? Well, he came in an angle of 45 degrees. Was he worth some Peter at the time? Well, he was helping him. He's a member of the Labour Party as well, of course. What chance do you give the Prescott Tarbuck dream ticket? Yes, well, they're a cleaning firm in Hull. What about Blair? Well, I, I can't stand that chap. He's such an imbecilic. And he's only 44, you know. How many Blairs are there at the moment? Well, there's 12 at the moment, and they're expecting another one. What platform? F uh, platform 9 in apartment 4. And how many of the Blairs will survive? Not very many, I must say. Are they all the same age? Roughly about the same. Give or take a pound. So out of the 13, how many will survive? I say about 11 and a half. So how many would that be? Uh, none. Uh, Sergeant Murphy. Good to see him last week. Hello. Okay, we've just got time for the intro of this as well. Of course, David Bowie. He got this day, too much telly. He worked in 24 hours of rubbish. Oh, to me, I mean. He got plastic bags, his eyes are going square. Oh, yeah. He no longer just stands so short. Uh, thanks to Ollie for tonight. Thanks very much to Peter Bainham. Thanks 
to my legs for getting me here and shaking throughout the show. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow, Emma Freud, one of M's only frock jock, will have two heroin addicts fighting for a gram of horse in the big issue tomorrow just to show how degrading it can get. dot go dot uk